Hi, I'm Matthew Dalitz, and this is the Neuropsychotherapist Weekly Report. This week we have Richard Hill over at the Evolution of Psychotherapy Conference in Anaheim, California. Yes, I'm jealous, so I'd love to be there. So let's dive right into what Richard has to report today. Good morning, folks. And here I am at the Milton Erickson Foundation Conference. And down there in the arena right now is my good friend Ernest Rossi talking about RNA and DNA in the arena, uh, which we're doing a plenary. 8,000 people full. So, hi from Richard Hill, the Mind Science Institute. Welcoming you to the Ericsson Foundation Evolution of Psychotherapy Conference. And I'm going to show you a few bits and pieces as we go around. Thanks, Ernie. So, folks, I've moved down to the exhibition hall. Now, there's nothing weird about the Ericsson Foundation. They just have fabulous playing cards six feet high. Now, it's really wonderful. All the famous, great psychotherapists are on playing cards, uh, and this is a blow-up demonstration. And, uh, you know, really, it's just a wonderful thing. Virginia Satir, uh, what a glorious person. But I want to show you here my another of my good friends. We've just seen Ernie Rossi, and now my good friend Dan Siegel, who's just got his, his, his new book out, coming out, Brainstorm. Uh, everything's there. Oh, it's backwards. I'm sorry because because we've done the reverse thing. But there's Whitney, and she's forwards, and she's at the Mind Sight Institute. So Mind Sight Institute. So that's all the interpersonal neurobiology uh, stuff. And Gaines, of course, you know, is the professional group of uh, uh, of the interpersonal neurobiology of which I'm on the board. So um, so uh, just look at that brainstorm and work it out and re backwards it because we're doing the reverse camera on uh, my screen. But Dan was uh, was in the the uh, yesterday again talking about the absolute importance of integration and understanding why we disintegrate and then how to reintegrate. And one of the most beautiful things I think, which is important, we do so much in neuroscience about the technicalities, but what is at the fundamental core of neuroscience and integration is kindness and compassion. I'd like to add my curiosity, but I think curiosity and kindness and compassion are all engaged in the same process, uh, and we'll talk more about this stuff as Dan does about Jacques Panksepp and some of his new books, but we'll do that in another episode. For now, Brainstorm Backwards, coming out in January, don't miss it, all about teenage areas of interpersonal neurobiology. Fantastic book. Thanks, folks. Bye, Whitney. So, here I am. I've moved around the corner from Dan, and who do we come across? But another Dan, but a Daniel Amen. Now, how many of you know about Daniel Amen and all the work he's done in uh, the work with ADD, particularly ADHD, and the brain spec work, looking at the way the brain works? How can we possibly do psychotherapy if we don't know what the brain looks like? And this wonderful stuff, this spec photography, where you can see how the brain is turning on and turning off from blood flow levels. It's a, it's a wonderful work. And I'm going to try and catch a bit of an interview with him later on. But if not, there's the guy, there's the, there's the name, there's the work, there's the, uh, the images. And uh, that's uh, a place you all need to go and check out. So I am here uh, with, uh, with Santa, now uh, a psychotherapeutic Santa, so therefore um, uh, we have to help him. But this is actually from the group, and again, sorry, everyone, Visions, so do everything backwards, Visions, which is a wonderful work. Now Santa, tell us a little bit about Visions, if you would. Visions Adolescent Treatment Centers is a program, a very exciting program, where we treat adolescents and their families suffering with mental health issues and addiction issues, the kind of things that families, when they need something more than just individual or outpatient therapy. And, and whereabouts are you based? Well, we're based in uh, the Santa Monica Mountains above Malibu and also in Santa Monica and Brentwood, California. Uh, that's it, uh, yeah. Because um, do, do you have any other, uh, is it only coming into California or do you have websites? or uh, We what, do what have do a website. Our website is visionsteen.com. Um, and we do help with resources all over the country and internationally as well. If um, families need help, we're happy to direct them to find great treatment programs because that's one of the complications is how do you find the good stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I'm not sure he's actually Santa. Oh. Uh, but 
this is this is the fun of the Ericsson, but the importance of uh, the work we're doing and this great work at Visions. Go look them up, go check them out, and if you're one of our American friends, uh, go see if it's a useful resource for you. So thanks, Santa. Bye. Bye. Okay, here I am at the most important stand in the whole Ericsson Congress, and that's the Milton Ericsson Foundation Museum stand, and we've got people coming in, and there's a lovely picture of Milton, and these great people who who dedicate their time and their energy to the Milton Erickson Foundation. But you can see there's all kinds of fabulous, fabulous stuff that's around here. We're going, and they, they have all kinds of, and you can get all kinds of paraphernalia, which is really cool. But here we have my great, great friend Ernie Rossi's book. And here's the thing, here's the thing that you all need to, to appreciate. It's very difficult now. I'm very lucky because I'm being asked to uh, have a look at these books and hopefully we can bring you some information about them. But this is the collected works of Milton Erickson. There's actually 16 volumes and this is what the Erickson Foundation through Ernest Rossi, and through Catherine Rossi, and through Roxana, Erickson Klein have produced and I hope to bring you lots more information about that over the next little while. So here we are, down the back, there's a bookshop that, uh, that's serious books, and we have lots of wonderful people doing wonderful things here at the Evolution of Psychotherapy Conference. Uh, I'll be going this afternoon to uh, listen to Marsha Leinen, uh, who is uh, one of the central people in my uh, suicide prevention program theories, and she'll be talking about dialectical therapy, and later on she's doing another one, especially on suicide, which is something I'm so excited about. But goodness gracious me, uh, Dr. Raymond, I'll go see him in a plenary later on. These sorts of conferences are extraordinary because you hear it from the master and you then go and make it your own afterwards. And more often than not, they encourage this. But for now, from the Erickson Foundation Conference and the Milton Erickson Foundation Museum where Jeff Zeig has turned his house into a fabulous museum of the history of psychotherapy and neuropsychotherapy, uh, I want to thank you for uh, joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Uh, thanks, Richard. Looks like you're having a great time over there in Anaheim. Before we close, I'd like to just uh, quickly uh, just follow up on a few bits of research that's happened during the week. Um, we've had uh, some research from our Russian news editor, Maria, about the value of fathers in both neurobiology and behavior of offspring. This research comes from the McGill University um, and they look at the absence of the father during critical periods of growth um, that can lead to impaired social and behavioral abilities as adults. Uh, now this was a uh, mouse study um, and there were assumptions made about humans um, but nevertheless it was a, a very interesting study. Uh, secondly, I'd just like to highlight another one from Kent State University. Uh, frequent cell phone use is linked to anxiety, lower grades, and reduced happiness in students. Uh, the study, um, the results of the study showed that cell phone use was negatively related to grade point average and positively related to anxiety. Uh, for the population that was studied, a high frequency cell phone user tended to have lower GPA, higher anxiety and lower satisfaction with life uh, relative to their peers who didn't use their phones as often. Uh, another interesting study um, looks at music bringing back memories to uh, brain injured. Um, these uh, researchers use popular music to help severely brain injured patients recall personal memories. Uh, it's the first time um, they examined, examined uh, music evoking autobiographical memories in patients with acquired brain injury. Um, the researchers said the findings suggest that music is an effective stimulus for eliciting autobiographical memories and may be beneficial in the rehabilitation of autobiographical amnesia, uh, but only in patients without a fundamental deficit in autobiographical recall memory and intact pitch perception. Another study from the University of Southern Florida um, suggesting that accelerated resolution therapy, or ART, um, should be the first line treatment for military personnel with PTSD. The fundamental process is visualization of the traumatic experience with bilateral stimulation, um, and then that's followed with um, positive constructed images and imaginations, again with bilateral stimulation. 
Um, now, the researchers of uh, this particular study uh, said that their goal is to obtain enough evidence and interest to warrant classifying art as a potential first-line treatment for PTSD among both civilian and military personnel. So that's a very interesting study there, and the details are below. So thank you very much for joining us this week, and I'll catch up again with Richard and uh, more on the conference in Anaheim, and I'll have a few more studies for you next week as well. So until then, goodbye.